Welcome to The Daily Show. First of all, congratulations on being part of a film that is being lauded by critics and fans alike as one of the best films that they've had the opportunity to see. Not mm -hmm. everyone has had the chance to see it yet, obviously, mm -hmm. but it is a really powerful story. We've seen stories about prisons. We've seen stories about wardens. Very few tales have touched people in this way because Clemency is a story where you play a warden who has the task of executing people who have been sentenced to death. Mm -hmm. And in this story, we see an interesting side of it, and that is the emotional toll it takes on the wardens as well as the prisoners. That's a powerful, different way to tell the story. What attracted you to being a part of this film to tell that story? Um, I am a woman of a certain age. I'm in my sixth decade. I'm educated, <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm educated, and I've been uh, an activist since I was a teenager. And I had never heard of this dilemma. I didn't know those people. I didn't know the, the degree of PTSD that is suffered by people that are charged, that we charge mm -hmm. with carrying out state-sponsored executions. And I figured if I didn't know, the vast majority of people didn't know, and that's the very reason you want to tell a story. It right. seems contrary to what people would want to talk about, you know, because it, it, many times people go, let's talk about the prisoners who are you know, uh, sentenced to death, and mm -hmm. some of them wrongly executed, but people will be like, the execution itself is wrong. Right. It's rare to tell a story where you humanize the warden as well, who is part of a system. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful side of the story to tell. Why do you think that that was important? Well, because when it comes to capital punishment, I believe as a society, we're to a degree pacified by the idea of murder under the guise of justice, right? We rarely take into account causality. We rarely take into account the effects of those who have to do this and dignify the people that they're doing it to. Right. You know, as we see through the relationship between Bernadine and my character Anthony Woods, who's on his way out, possibly he's actively trying to gain clemency, but we see that tumultuous relationship happen between the two of these people as they are trying to find dignity and real value in this situation. And uh, I think for us, it's great to know that side of things because as a community, this is something we are all actively complicit in. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand our real responsibility when it comes to the idea of capital punishment. It's interesting that you say that, especially the part about your characters building a connection. Mm -hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, it's still human beings on either yes. end. You know, and we like to forget that, but they are human beings. Absolutely. And in many cases, you forget that there is a connection, a strange connection between wardens and prisoners where, mm -hmm. in many ways, they're housed in the same jail. When telling the story, how important was it for you to try and humanize and also empathize with somebody that most of society wouldn't feel for, and that is somebody who is, you know, the head of a prison? Well, you know, any character that, that I turn into a human being and stand up and I, and I bring their voice forward, they're all human beings, no, no matter what a person has done. Anything that any human being is capable of, we're all capable of, mm. high and low. And so, as the actor, you don't pass judgment. Uh, you don't bring your opinions, the way mm. you talk, the way you move. Your job is to get yourself out of the way and find the way that that person looks out on the, wor on the world. So it, it is, I need to find that woman's reality. Nobody wakes up in the morning and say, you know, I'm going to be an asshole today. Everybody <laughs> thinks, no, everybody thinks, you know, I can fix this. I know how to make this run smoothly. Right. Right. And so your job is always to find the human being. Mm. It actually is a very intimate relationship between the person charged... First of all, you're going to be there 10 to 20 years yeah. exhausting, uh, exhausting appeals. Uh -huh. So essentially, not only the warden, but the major and all the other people there, one day they have to put their co-worker to death because they're the only... Pe they're on a row isolated together for all that time. It's she interesting that you, you say it that way because... You know, studies have shown, and, and you, you, you really delve into that in the film, and it's shown in a beautiful way through yeah. the director's lens, mm -hmm. that there's a PTSD that wardens actually suffer, especially the people who deal with death row specifically. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's a weird thing for society to accept, but it's, it, it hurts not just the person who is executed and their family and people who know them, but it also actually hurts the person who is tasked with exactly. taking their life. Exactly. I mean, look, 
our writer director Chinoya Chukwu, she executed that brilliantly because this is something we get to see from a, a really nuanced perspective, of, an intimate perspective, uh, like you said, from a humane point of view, uh -huh. where you can actually see somebody have hopes and dreams and a want for something more, but they're stuck in this position and they have to do what they're charged with doing. Right. Such is the case again with, you know, my character Anthony, who is the prisoner. And he's just seeking to be seen as a human being. Right. So, you know, at this point in the film, he's been in prison for about 15 years. So you get to peel back some of those years between the relationship between the warden and my, you know, and Anthony. Uh, and it's really something that allows you as an audience member to think about things in a completely new way. And that's what I love about it. You come away with this film with new thought. When you were playing the warden, I know you get into your characters. I know you, you, you inhabit a different world. What was the most surprising thing you discovered about the world of wardens, specifically women who are tossed with being wardens in American prisons? Um, I met three wardens mm -hmm. and a deputy warden. They were all sisters, black women. Uh, it surprised me, first of all, that women would be wardens. I learned that they came to it from the mental health field. They come to it from social, social work. And it's always a revelation, and you live for revelations, to be able to uh, see a side of an issue that you're on the absolute polar opposite of, right. and to be able to understand that person. You may not agree, but everybody's got, everybody's got a role to play in life. I mean, that's what a society is. Mm -hmm. So to, to be able to understand, you know what, that's the person I want is my commander because they're not going to blink. They're not going to breach protocol because one stitch drop, the whole fabric might fall apart. Mm -hmm. So to be able to understand a woman that could say, no, you can't, you can't go to your mama's funeral. Now, what do you want to eat? What do you want to eat for your last meal? Wow. And to be able to understand that. Did you see any of the toll that it took on them as real human beings? Did they share any of those stories with you? They, they did, and they did it just the way Bernadine talks. We get to, we have the luxury of emotion, especially us as artists, uh -huh. and uh, especially us as Americans. Americans are always talking about how they feel. I feel, <laughs> how do you feel? Everybody's like that. <laughs> but uh, there is a place in America where people cannot show their feelings, and they, they still experience them, but they have a completely different way of uh, showing compassion. You, the incarcerated can't cry, can't yell, and the incarcerators cannot cry and can't yell. And I think it's important for us to bring that into the conversation when we're deciding how we feel about capital punishment. Yeah. It's interesting, because it always sounds like there are two people who are imprisoned in a strange way. It's not just the prisoner, but it's also the guard. Yeah. And Aldous, in, in the story, we see your character, you know, not just trying to show their humanity, your humanity as, mm -hmm. the, as the character, but we also see you seeing the humanity of, of, of you know, the person who's keeping you in prison, and it's, and it's their job. Right. You spent a lot of time in a prison cell for this. You know, you, you, you're sitting there, and it, it, there's moments oh, where it's camera, yeah. but there's, there's a lot of moments where you're just in a real jail cell, just, just sitting there. Yeah. Is there a part of you that goes like, this, is, this makes me uncomfortable, this, this, this experience is a little too real as, a, as an idea, as a concept? Um, because a lot of people don't realize what a jail cell actually is. Yeah, and given the past few roles, I've been in jail quite a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> very familiar. Uh, we actually shot in, in a real uh, jail. There was one time where the uh, cell closed and um, the button didn't work to open it up. <laughs> so your boy was stuck for a little bit. It's cool, they, they got it open. Um, <laughs> but you know, it makes you think differently. Uh, no, for me, oddly enough, with uh, my relationship with my craft, I choose to be a part of projects that I'm ambitious about when it comes to the potential for their uh, positivity, you know? Right. So with this, the harder it got for the character, the more excited I got because I knew that the world was going to be able to get a completely different view or perspective of what these real men and women go through on a daily basis. Right. So I was really, uh, it does hit you. It is polarizing to a degree, but at the same time, I say I'm doing my work and to a degree, hopefully I'm working in my purpose, which makes me quite proud to sit in those situations and have to feel it and go through it because that's the art I want to give to people. I think you've both done an amazing job. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for telling the story. We'll be in select theaters December 27th. You make sure you go and watch it. Alfred Woodard, Eldest Hodge, everybody.